In this part, I would like to uh, build on what you already know uh, regarding drawing a cube um, in one or two point perspective. Uh, really, in this part, uh, the emphasis is going to be on uh, helping you to understand how to draw these same cubes, perspective cubes, uh, in, from different viewing angles. So there are three main viewing angles that you will most commonly use in your design sketches, uh, and uh, I would like to show show you how to um, how to actually uh, manipulate those viewing angles, so you can show off your ideas. Uh, from the best um, from the best angles uh, to communicate your ideas so the first viewing angle uh, that is most commonly uh, seen in design sketches or idea sketches is the uh, top-down view or the bird's eye view it's called bird's eye it's almost because of the fact that uh, you're looking at the object from uh, top down so I'm gonna draw a horizon line here uh, again, as always, and I'm going to put my two vanishing points here. So uh, what I've been showing you in terms of drawing perspective cubes has essentially been um, drawn from this bird's eye view here. All right, so uh, I won't go into the all the details of drawing the cubes. Um, you have already seen how that's executed. So this is your typical top-down view. As you can see here, uh, you are able to see quite a few, uh, quite a few different angles or, or facets of this particular object. Obviously, you are able to see the front, the top, uh, and the side view uh, of this uh, simultaneously. So that's why this particular view is probably the most popular. Uh, one used when people are always describing ideas as using using this top-down view or this um, this bird's eye view. The other angle, the second one that is sometimes seen, is the eye level view. So uh, this is one uh, where it's almost like you're holding this object up to your eye level and inspecting it, um, you know, fairly closely. But the disadvantage of this, you'll notice, of this particular system is that uh, you really don't see your top or your bottom um, surfaces. So this one tends to be one that people use um, more so for emphasizing the front and the side of this uh, particular object. All right, Really, you don't get much information from your uh, regarding your top and the bottom views and then the third view viewing angle that you'll see is going to be your worm's eye view all right so uh, it's called the worm's eye view because typically it looks like uh, something where your worm poking its head out of the ground and looking up at an object uh, in this case the object would be our cube so for the purposes of this um, demo here, I'm going to show this uh, this cube as somewhat floating in the air, um, and you'll recognize this view as something you probably see in some design sketches where um, you know the there is detail that is on the bottom of this particular object that uh, usually needs to be shown. All right, so this is the primary reason why someone would want to use a uh, worm's eye view or bottom up view. Uh, you can still see your front and your side views, uh, but you also see your bottom view. So this is sort of a cousin to the, the uh, bird's eye view in that uh, you see a third plane. All right, so that is, those are the three main, um, the three main types of viewing angles and eye level and with the worm's eye view so so how do you 
you know, how do you decide which one uh, to use? It really depends on uh, what you want to show off the most about your idea, whether it happens at the top or the bottom or the front or the sides uh, of the object. So uh, for a practical demonstration of how you can use this particular method um, of choosing your viewing angles is um, let's say we are drawing a car and uh, I'm just gonna draw this car from three different viewing angles so so if we're doing let's say our traditional top-down view um, we can actually just say alright well we need the corner of the car and I'm drawing a very simplified view of this car uh, just for the sake of simplicity okay and uh, we can draw the hood or the compartment of this car so we basically have a view of the car where we can sort of look down on it obviously this this car is pretty close to the horizon line um, the second one is going to be a car that's viewed at eye level so this is interesting because uh, this is a fairly dramatic view of the car and we'll talk about drawing cylinders um, a little bit in another part but uh, I wanted to quickly show you how just understanding viewing angles can really determine how much of an how much information you can show uh, in an object and then obviously the worm's eye view so again we'll assume that this is a floating car uh, I'll show you a little bit of a variant of this uh, worm's eye view um, in a second so obviously I'm drawing these very fast and very loose just in an attempt to not have this take up too much time but now you can see that for a car this is a very uncommon view but it does show you a little bit more detail in this bottom area here especially if you need to point out something that that is important so there we have it we have our uh, our bird's eye view our eye level view and we have our um, worm's eye view all right so those are the three uh, types of viewing angles you can view at uh, lastly there is a variant of the worm's eye view where uh, we could have drawn the car actually sitting on The surface of the line of the horizon line and sometimes the horizon line is used as a uh, it's used as a ground plane so it's almost as if you shifted this let's say this is a toy car um, what to where the, the wheels the four wheels where they touch um, basically sit right on your eye line and this gives your sketches a more grounded look if you are drawing with the intent of using a horizon line to actually ground um, your object all right so this is fairly rare um, mostly automotive uh, if you're drawing cars or anything like that um, so so that uh, this is basically an application of a viewing angle all right so Hopefully this was fairly understandable. All right.